time for Nerdgasm. All right, guys. Well, we asked you on Twitter to use hashtag AskBarnacles to ask me some 3D printer-related questions that I'm going to answer for you right now. Akil asks, on average, how many tries does it take to get a print perfect? The answer to that actually comes down to experience, the printer you're using, and how reliable it is. And uh, honestly, like the quality of your filament, you got to hedge your bets. But to be honest, once you get used to 3D printing, you're almost guaranteed to get the print that you want every time you do it, if it's something you're familiar with. But if it's new territory with lots of overhangs and lots of really complex detail, you may have to tinker with settings such as heat, environmental conditions, things like that to get it perfect. So Zane Dark asks, when printing, does the price of filament mean anything? Are there Pradas and Gucci's of filament? Are they worth the extra money? The answer to that question simply I'm gonna say is yes. I've used tons of different filaments and I found that the cheaper filaments that you get, uh, some of the really, really cheap ones from like eBay, and Amazon, they have diameter issues. They don't have a consistent diameter throughout so that when you're printing, you do tend to actually get a lower quality print because of underfeeding and overfeeding issues or just any feeding issue in general, depending on the how cheap the filament is. Now, the filaments that I prefer are ones like from ColorFab, the Ultimaker PLA line of filaments are actually really good and really consistent. So it is worth spending a little bit of extra money to get a filament that has a fantastic record for having a permanent diameter that doesn't change. So definitely check the reviews on the filament before you buy it. Make sure that people aren't complaining about diameter issues or feed issues. All right, Mr. Jod29 asks, do you think 3D printing will be used by parents in the future to buy toys and have them printed at home? Actually, I think that's actually happening among nerd parents right now. I mean, me being one of them, I love the 3D print toys for my son Xander. Now, to be completely honest, I think it's gonna be a while before we see toys printed at home because you are limited in what you can print to just stuff that's plastic, like you know cars with wheels and things like that. You're not gonna be printing Xboxes anytime soon. But the flip side of that is I think you're gonna see a lot of parents taking on projects where they're building custom things or customizing existing things for their kids. But who knows? In the future, we're probably gonna have replicators where we just say, hey, computer, I want an Xbox. And it just magically appears just like the movies. At least I hope so. All right, so Tom M asks, what is the best way to get into 3D printing and what is the best equipment for first timers? Now, that's kind of a hard question to answer because it depends on what you want to get out of 3D printing. Is speed relevant to you? Uh, you know, what resolution do you want to print? Do you need something that prints incredibly high resolution or can you get by with strength of parts and lower resolution? But honestly, if you want to get a perfect out of the box experience, the Ultimakers have been the best for me and I've been using them since the beginning. My first printer was an Ultimaker and now I have four of them. They're fantastic 3D printers for a first timer and they're open source, which means you can use all kinds of stuff that the public creates in different software packages on these. You don't have to just use what Ultimaker gives you and that gives you a lot of strength. But if you're just getting started, I'd say go out to the forums, watch lots of YouTube videos, get very familiar with the technology before you decide to invest in it because you need to know the limitations of it so that you're not disappointed. And in some cases, you might even be surprised at what you can do. All right, Reviews by Gary asks, how hard is it to print one piece with multiple colors? Now that depends on a lot of factors. If you want to print a piece in multiple colors and you just want to basically print one color and then change to another color for additional layers, you can literally just pause the printer, pull the filament, install a new color and resume the print, and you can print an unlimited number of colors that are available. But if you want to print a part in multiple colors on the same layer, then you basically need a printer that has something called dual extrusion, or in some cases, they even have four extruders on them. And there's some other off the wall options that are coming out that can actually mix the filament colors in real time while you're printing. But right now, I'd say your best option for printing in multiple colors is to print one color and then paint it. Evil Jacko asks, the Stormtrooper costume, despite the effort and time, looks fantastic. Do you think that's something you'll want to do again? The answer is absolutely. I learned so much from doing that project that's gonna to translate to it being easier in the future. I now have more 3D printers, so I can print a lot faster, and the end result was something absolutely amazing, and I wanna make sure that I do that again. So yes, absolutely, I will be doing another project like this. I just don't think it's something I'm gonna do all the time, because it does take a massive amount of time and energy, and in a lot of cases, money because you use up a lot of filament doing something like that. All right, Sound Without Genre asks, do you think most schools should have 3D printers available for students to use? abso freaking lootly Honestly, today, the only reason I am into technology as much as I am is because I was fortunate to go to a, a school, a grade school actually growing up that had computers, and that was very rare when I was young, and that led to me actually getting a jump start 
uh, on the future of technology. So I think every single school should have 3D printers and it should be a part of the curriculum because honestly, the technology behind these little guys scales up really huge and this is the next industrial re revolution. So having your kids be proficient in this technology, I would say as important as them having being proficient in computers 15 years ago. Benjamin Lothian asks, when do you think uh, that a good 3D printer will become affordable under $300? That's a tough one, guys. Uh, there are some printers coming out like the Tico that are like $180, but they all have incredibly small build volumes. And they don't have heated beds. The first thing I'm going to tell you is if you buy a 3D printer, get a heated bed. You're going to kick yourself if you don't because it makes the whole process easier, makes the print quality higher, makes it easier to remove the item from the bed, and also prevents the item from coming unstuck while you're printing. Trust me on this, I didn't have a heated bed for a year and I regretted every minute of it. Wesley Duggan asks, why won't you custom build your own 3D printer as a series? Come on, do it. And he literally like spelled it out with lots of O's. Uh, the answer is, I get a lot of requests to build the printers, but I already have six Cartesian type 3D printers. I have a Delta printer on the way. I've got an SLA printer. So I don't, it's not high on my priorities to build a 3D printer when I already have a lot of commercially viable 3D printers that they've worked the kinks out of. And when you build your own 3D printer, it takes a lot of work and a lot of tuning to get these things working right. And it's just something that I don't have a lot of time to invest into right now. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to do it because I think it would be cool to have the Barnacles Nerdgasm brand of one 3D printer. All right, so Johan De Jong asks, have you given thought to printing the shell and then backfilling it with expanding foam? Think, the, think of the halo gun you did. Uh, it's funny, Jason, my cameraman here, and I were already talking about doing something like this earlier today using a polymer resin. Uh, but the expanding foam concept works good too, and filling it in should give it additional strength. It's something that we're definitely gonna try out in the future, and it's something that's definitely on our mind, but honestly, we have no idea how it's gonna turn out. But it seems like we're thinking on the right track. All right, so Sean Brazner asks, what's the most important point for your consideration when buying a 3D printer besides the unit cost? Honestly, the things I look at is the resolution of the 3D printer, what its maximum uh, print speed is, because usually that's an indicator of how accurate the machine is and it's more accurate at lower speeds. Uh, I also like to look at what type of filament diameter it uses, whether it's like 1.75 or three millimeter, or technically 2.85 millimeter, uh, because depending on what you're doing and what type of filament you want to use, that actually is a huge consideration. But most importantly, check the forums, check social media, and see what other people's opinions of the 3D printers are, because if people are having constant problems with it, you're going to see it splattered everywhere throughout the internet, and that's a good indicator for you to stay the hell away. All right, KJ Designs asks, how many of my 3D printed heads do I have around the house? To my knowledge, I think I only have four. And let's be honest, I only 3D printed one of them myself. The other ones came from another company. Um, that, that doesn't make me narcissistic, right, Jason? Well. I don't think so. Alan Begun asks, what type of painter's tape do you use on your 3D printers? To be honest, I don't use uh, painter's tape anymore because when you have a heated bed, you really don't have to. Some people still opt to use it, but I personally don't. But when I was using 3D, uh, when I was using tape for that, I'd use the 3M. The 3M tape usually worked the best for me, and I'd scuff it up with a credit card or something with a hard edge, and that would usually allow things to adhere really, really well to it. But man, is it a pain to remove once the print is done. All right, Joe Roberts asks, um, if I've printed anything that provides utility in my life, so what things have I printed that basically aren't just useless little crap that sits on a shelf. And the answer is a lot of things. I 3D printed holders uh, on the side of my bed that hold all my game controllers. I 3D printed racks for my wall for holding my headphones. I have 3D printed clips and other little mechanisms, uh, cell phone docks, all kinds of stuff actually that's utility in my life. And the cool thing is I got a 3D scanner recently and I plan to use that to actually scan broken parts around the house so that I can fix them in CAD and print out replacements for like knob, broken knobs on things like my drawers and my stove. So 3D printers can be used for making useful stuff uh, primarily. And honestly, Jason, my cameraman, he's like the king of designing little things, printing them out and using them around his house. I think he does that more than just printing useless crap. So that's, that's where we differ a little. All right, Miles Scott asks, uh, what did I learn from printing the Stormtrooper suit? The, it is a hell of a lot of work. 
oh my God, when I first saw the Stormtrooper suit and started developing it, I thought that honestly it was going to be a lot of printing, but that was an understatement. It literally took three months of printing, 20 plus rolls of filament, and it took a lot of tinkering because it was unprecedented and something that we've never done before. Uh, so figuring out the proper infill to have a durable part versus using too much plastic and having it be too heavy was a very fine line. And I'll be honest, we didn't nail it on all points. There are a ton of things that I would have changed if I did it over again, uh, but it, it was tough. Very tough. James King Ray asks, how much did it cost to print your Stormtrooper armor? Well, luckily for me, it was sponsored by ColorFab. They sent me all the filament that I used, which was in excess of 20 rolls. Probably more than that, because I had some throwaways figuring things out as I went. And Ultimaker provided the printer. So luckily for me, printing the suit just cost me literally three months of my time, which is worth about $11 million. So I'm gonna say the suit cost about $11 million. AJ Tex asks, do you think more phone companies should allow and help us 3D print covers or cases for our cell phones? Absolutely. But honestly, I don't think they're gonna be in any hurry to do that because Apple makes so much money peddling their cases. And most cell phone manufacturers do and the third parties that they work with and give rights to for the designs share that money with them. So realistically, there's no reason why those companies would want to help you print a case. Now, I think there's some open source phones out there like the OnePlus One, OnePlus Two, things like that, where it's in their best interest to support these types of initiatives and hopefully it catches on. All right, Mild Smurf asks, what is the coolest thing that you or other people you've seen have 3D printed? Well, the coolest thing that I've 3D printed that I like is the NASA Space Wrench. It's a simple design that demonstrates that a single 3D print can come off and basically break free and have movable parts inside of it. And it actually works. But on a whole different level, I'd say this right here is pretty cool. This is actually a 3D printed RC car that's currently at 133 miles per hour and it's testing and they're trying to beat the record at over 200 miles per hour. I think that's probably a little bit cooler than the NASA Space Wrench, but you can judge. Trey Weir asks, what is the worst thing that's ever happened when 3D printing? All right, the worst thing that ever happened was I started a 3D print, I didn't adjust the bed properly, so the filament just printed out into midair, it clinged to the print head, and overnight it continued to print, clinging to the print head, and when I came back the next morning, it literally had half a roll of filament consuming the entire print head, smoldering, and the whole room smelled like burnt plastic. Luckily for me, I had a fire extinguisher sitting next to the unit, so had it caught fire, I probably would have been okay, but it gave me a whole new respect for the printer, and now I never leave the printer until that first layer is good and stuck. Good and stuck. Pro tip. All right, well, we asked you guys on Twitter to use hashtag AskBarnaclesCameraGuy to ask him, Mr. Zachariah, a.k.a. Jason, questions about me, Jerry, a.k.a. Barnacles. All right, so let's see. Our first question comes from Hamish Stewart, and he asks, uh, asked Jason, did you get a donut too? Because we did, we got a donut earlier. Did, did you get a donut? Well, I got, I got, I got part of one. Well, what happened to the rest? Well, Jerry got a little distracted with a squirrel, and I was able to sneak a bite, but I got some. A little. Always with the fat jokes, this guy. All right, we have a question here from Andrew. What does he smell like? He's asking you what I smell like, and he said he's asking for a friend. Yeah, sure, Andrew. Sure. So so what, what do I smell like? <laughs> so um, we've already spent one night in the hotel. Okay, I smell like speed stick and Axe body spray and man love. Oh, I, I'm still alive, so there is that. So it's, you know. It's a good kind of stank. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Joshua Reeser asks, is Jerry's voice gone yet? Wait, I know the answer already. So just confirm it. Yeah, it's already gone. I can hear it in his voice. Half a day, he's even been monitoring me and still. And wow, I guess nobody, nobody realizes we're actually shooting video here and just walks between us and the camera. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Rich Plays Games asks you, can you give us your best impression of any YouTuber? Hey, guys, this is Jerry Barnacles here. G give us your t Timmy Tech TV. No. <laughs> Atticus Skeens asks, does he pay well? Uh, um, is there a, such a thing as... Wait, should I? I uh, I'm not I'm not paying him, guys. Are you are you okay with that, right? Well, I I nobody cares. I, I get, nobody cares. I did get a bite of donut. He got he got some donut and yeah, so you you just don't worry about what I pay him. Erratic Airs asks, what's 32 times pi to the diameter of the sun? 
Next question. Mark Westcott asks, on average, how long do you wait for Barnacles to finish his poop naps? 13.7 minutes in the morning. In the afternoon, it's actually about 11.3. And, and at night, it's 19.7. There's a lot of poop naps. There's a lot. I don't even like Instagram them all. That's how many there are. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.